<laughs> worst. Uh, all right. Worst. You guys are like interviewing Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> and, and you oh know how, how good that a thing is, a thing that is to us. <laughs> She's gone. All right, we're live. Okay, we're, we're live. live. Okay, this is perfect. Liz is gone. Liz is gone. We're live. We're live. <laughs> and she's disappeared. She's gone. Oh, well, well I'm going to do our introduction. She wants Where to we make go? an entrance. She's that's back. why. <laughs> that was very Always. Muppet like, Liz. <laughs> 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 that was perfect. It's the Muppet All Show right. credits. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We promised you this was going to be a fun live, and it already is, and we haven't even started. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, let's introduce our two guests today. Um, yeah. First is on, not on screen. She's waiting for her introduction. Liz Lachman. <laughs> <laughs> Liz is an Emmy-winning composer. She's written and directed several short films, and uh, her the latest being Pin Up, which has won what's the official count? I think it was like a million film festival awards. Is that million, yes? Yeah, 30, <laughs> that's where you were. <laughs> 30, oh, 30 awards. Wow. Yeah. And next to her is the lovely Susan Feniger. You probably Yay. know her from Two Black Tamales. She's a chef, restaurateur, and owns the Border Grill and the recently opened Socolo. Um, recently and opened and temporarily closed. And temporarily closed. Yeah. Yes, great timing. Temporary. Um, Perfect. And, but most importantly to us, Susan is a huge philanthropist. Um, she's really um, very important to the L LA LGBT Center and the Scleroderma Foundation and they Scleroderma are- Scleroderma Research Foundation. Yes, Scleroderma Research Foundation. And yeah. they are both truly amazing, wonderful people. And we are so thrilled to have them on our Aww. Facebook Live today together. I wanna though, I wanna add Aww. another, um, another very important title for Liz. Yes. Okay, good. Which is which is that over the last six weeks, she's also added plumber to her. No. Oh. <laughs> what did you have to yeah. do? Well, I had to change the sink drain. Whoa, wow, that's a big one. That's a big job. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, first you have to get a spanner. I say what now? <laughs> exactly. Well, a spanner is how the Brits say wrench. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Apparently, I was looking on a UK. I was looking on a UK <laughs> website. I didn't know it. And then they said, "Get a 24 millimeter spanner." And I was like, "I don't know what that is." So I looked it up, and it said wrench. Thank God for Google. They could have just said wrench. <laughs> and then she did it. To I did the it. whole thing wow. apart. Wow. Mask wow. on and everything. Did I do wow. a mask? Yeah. Did How I long did so? it take? <laughs> um, about 15 minutes. Wow, really? I rehearsed ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. You He's very you detailed. Like, you know, you have to rehearse because, like, if you As take, you saw. If you <laughs> For the last hour. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> thank God. You, thank God you rehearsed. If you don't, if, let's, say, let's say you take the old sink drain out, which is two parts, and they all have little yeah. things on them things that have names, you know, and, and they all have different very names important. in England too. Yeah, right. And then <laughs> what if you go to put yours back in and you don't remember the correct order of all the little washers and rent yeah. little nuts and crap that they want you to have on there that are all very important. Sure. So I had to rehearse and put everything on. Did and you take pictures of the different that. stages? What? No, Did I didn't because I was too nervous. I, was I would nervous. never be able to do that. Even yeah. like, you know, putting together, I like cannot even take, like I get a bottle of cream, like body cream. <laughs> I can't even figure out how to like turn that thing <laughs> to make the pump work. I, no I hate can, those. I no hate one those. can, these are, you know, I think they do it on purpose. Well, it's because then you can't get like the bottom in. You can't right. get any. Right. You gotta untwist. Yeah, to untwist. I that's yeah. what I've been doing this whole time. Untwisting and getting cream on that little stem and then taking it off and then putting that back in. It's so stupid. My boyfriend was just laughing at me two days ago for doing that. I'm like, it's Did the only way I can get the cream out. 
hand it to him and say, here, you open it. <laughs> yeah. But, but honestly, like I'm, right. I was sort of blown away. Then Liz did another plumbing thing. Like our hot water wasn't working. The temperature. Inside. The thermostat yeah, or thermostat. something. Wow. So Liz went online and then figured out how to like fix it. And suddenly, I mean, for the whole 10 days, Liz was taking lukewarm showers. <laughs> I, I went, go on a I walked plumbing. the 25 feet and went to the other bathroom, but <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> You're not going to get the best of me. I kept thinking <laughs> one day it's going to magically work because it magically stopped working. Right. So, I, so why couldn't it just magically start working? I mean, right. right. That's how I deal with most plumbing problems. Yeah. That's I how hope. I deal with life. Here's how I deal. Here's how I deal with most plumbing problems. Yeah. I, can you come fix this? But, but you know, honestly, you know, like, what? I'm you know what? sort of blown away. Here's the thing. I get really mad because the guys, whenever anyone comes to fix anything, I think to myself, if I watch them, I could do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I, I'm not putting them down for their abilities, but I keep thinking it can't be that hard. So next time I won't have to pay them $200. I can do it myself. Now and now know. lucky because, you know, I had to do it myself. So it worked right. out. But now yeah. Susan's going to expect you to fix everything. For sure. <laughs> what else is new? Absolutely. Everything. So speaking of your house, you guys had quite, it, the, you haven't just been dealing with coronavirus. You've had quite a year up mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Do you mind talking a little bit about? No. Go ahead. Know. Make us relive yeah. the trauma. That's. Oh, right. we don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> I'm it's joking. Just been, been I'm kidding. Since the fires, so since end of October, October twenty eighth to be exact, we were out we, of our house for four months. and a half months. Yeah. Four and a half months. Yeah. And. Our whole house was just completely emptied, you know. Cleaned for smoke. They cleaned the ceilings, all smoke damaged. And then we got back into the house one, well, one month before now we can't get out of the house. I care for what you wish for, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Making up for lost time. <laughs> I never want to leave this house again. <laughs> Yeah, now it's like we'll never leave it again. Oh, apparently, yeah. The good news is someone up there is listening. <laughs> right. I've got the message loud and clear. But we are back in the house, which has been thank God. Fantastic. Yeah. So glad that yeah. we're back in yeah. for this. I mean, everything yeah. was burned outside the house, not the house walls, but the smoke. Because the fire was 10 feet from our house. 10. Well, in some places five feet. Yeah. yeah. So the firemen definitely fire people saved I wasn't there saved our house <laughs> they did they were still here when we were allowed to come back after a few days you know they were still here looking for hot spots with their hoses and they were still they were, the they were amazing they literally the firefighters that were here for sure saved our house yeah. I mean literally the the it was burnt singed <laughs> all the way up to like this literally this fire all of our, yeah yeah it was freaky That's i mean it was the thing is we didn't know how close it was till we came back right and right. We, saw, <laughs> we saw the fire coming over the hillside above our house wow so that was freaky we were it was like 1 30 in the morning and fanny the one dog. of our dogs shook her head she and sort of woke us up from the smoke and we um, walked outside and it was so intense. It was so intense. We definitely knew this couldn't be a fire like from Santa Barbara. Well, we weren't it sure. It was so windy. We thought it's got to be fairly close. But then we called the fire department and they didn't answer. Oh, shit. <laughs> they were really busy to answer their phone. And, there, and so we drove down there. It was, we got the dogs in the car. We drove down the hill a mile and a half. The fire engines were there waiting to come up the hill. They were all ready, six of them. And I said, should we be evacuating? And he said, I would. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, that's that's you the second would, bad sign. Yeah. Yeah. Bad so, sign yeah. number two. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So then we drove back up the hill and that's when we saw the flames that we had not seen coming down. It was behind us. We didn't look that direction. And so it, that was crazy. That, that was crazy was seeing scary. that amount of Very fire. scary. It was coming right over. Our hill. And then it was literally in Izzy's Deli. We, we in 
That's we, where we went to because it was a 24 hour place. We with, didn't know where to go. We went with all, we went with our dogs and then within an, within a half hour, our whole neighborhood was in there with their animals with their <laughs> and we sort of, you know, I was walking into the bus station, pouring coffee and yeah. wow. I mean, we were in there till nine o'clock in the morning. Wow. So, yeah, we didn't, you know, we didn't. And know. watching on one TV, the whole neighborhood watching. Mm -hmm. seeing what streets and just wondering if they kept you know, showing we an aerial view of the fire and they'd overlay a map of the because all the uh, streets up here are kind of windy yeah and you know we didn't honestly didn't know if the house would be here but we were lucky so oh, but we're God. here now thank you we're here now. yeah thank, <laughs> thank you nancy you talk i'm going to step away for one second oh okay all right you should so, on to the bathroom before we started yeah really <laughs> Come on. Sure the important things first. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about where you're at now, how, how your life is in coronavirus land and what you guys are doing. Well, I'll I can say one thing. We haven't killed each other yet. Excellent. I know. <laughs> I'm shocked. We've never spent this much time together ever <laughs> in 25 years. Wow. We've been together 25 years. How's it yeah. going? Did you just say that? <laughs> it feels, it feels like 10 minutes underwater. <laughs> <laughs> yuck 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 <laughs> there's the fuzzy bear coming out <laughs> uh, it's been it's been a, an interesting time for sure i mean yeah. i think you know we've been both being hyper aware of being extra extra safe so we you know we do have some friends that are like social distancing but we have well, not done any. They say they're social distancing and then we FaceTime them and we see them all hanging out. It's like, Ooh. what? What? Yeah, that's so we, Whatever. We're been, not doing that. We've been very, you know, just hanging out here. We both have been sort of, I mean, Liz works from home, you know, all the time writing. Yeah. And so she's <clears throat> home and sort of, sort of little, comfortable with it. Yeah. I, you know, am never home. So, yeah. but we both sort of been our, in our offices working and we sort of literally, we get up in the morning, hang out with the dogs right, a bit. Walk them or play with them or whatever. And then, and they're thrilled. They are <laughs> thrilled. And then, you know, literally we end up working until like six or 6.30. And then we, we end up- come, know, We come together for lunch. Yeah. Yesterday lunch was standing in the kitchen like this talking. <laughs> 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 And we went back and then, um, and then usually, yeah, usually around right, six or six 30, we're having a drink. You know, usually at three 30, I start <laughs> thinking, well, early to have an alcoholic beverage. I wonder. Yeah. Not in these circumstances. Six 30 somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, then, so then, yeah, I, I, I shout to Susan somewhere at the other side of the house. Can we have a drink yet? She's like, no. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, so then I go back to work. Another but couple it's, hours. It's, we've been busy. I mean, I feel like I've been really busy, yeah. you know. But and we and but, we did we did clean the whole house up. We did all that. We, we went through all the cupboards and all the drawers. But we everything. sort of, but we sort of did it on the weekends. So <laughs> it's right. been interesting. We've been like in work mode yeah. Monday through Friday, like yeah. focused work mode. Yeah. And then Saturday, Sunday, doing the things like you know cleaning the toilet, yeah. you know, <laughs> vacuuming. <laughs> Good. Vacuuming with a vacuum cleaner that is a backpack vacuum cleaner. Which is really fun. What? Yeah, swear to God. Okay. <laughs> it's like a jet pack. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly like a jet pack. Uh, it's the only great. thing it, you just can't fly. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's so much like a jet pack. You put it on, you clip it here, you clip it here, hands free. You got walk your around thing. with your coffee. Walk around. Vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's That's the coolest awesome. thing ever. Have you had that for a long time or was oh. that a quarantine buy? It, well, you know a what happened? It was, but here's why. Because one of the things that happened during the fire was we, the floors were redone. Oh. And when we got back into the house, I thought, I don't want the vacuum, you know, those, um, the ones that crawl. I didn't yeah. want them mm -hmm. scratching the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, so the guy who did the floors said, you know, they have these things. And I was like, oh. That is so me. <laughs> I so, one of those. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, for everybody watching, I have um, envy of Liz and Susan's floors because they are painted a pale yellow, stained a pale yellow. They're the yeah. most beautiful floors I've ever seen. 
Yeah. 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 I don't All know. Right. I'll now just tilt you down. Okay. Let's now see. Oh, down. Susan, you better put some pants on quick. <laughs> Wait. Um, you, while you're you know, doing well, that. Oh, oh, pretty. Oh, see, oh yeah. Beautiful. This it's camera doesn't pretty. do it justice, but they, they are beautiful. They're yeah. like a nice light. So but it has my... it has been sort it's been an interesting time. I mean, I think like everybody, you know, I've been on a million webinars, oh. conference calls with our team, with yeah. you know, the rest restaurant team, people all restauranters all across the country, um, with the LGBT center, I've been, you know, connecting there and various things. So I feel like I've been really busy with work stuff, trying to figure out how to feed our staff, get them produce, blah, blah, you know, really focus. So it's been educational and scary and, you know, and trying to figure it all out, the PPP plan, yeah. how that works, how our, you know, ridiculously ineffective president, you know, I is not getting it, anything how done. How it works, honey, is yeah. the major purpose to get the money. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it works. Yeah. That's how it works. So Susan, yeah. let, let's talk a little bit about what you are doing because you um, talk about what, what you had to do with the restaurants and also how you're trying to support your staff during this time. So we've um, closed all the restaurants, Vegas, obviously strip closed down complete, everything on March 15th closed. So we closed Socolo, closed Border Grill downtown. Um, and now we are, we haven't, done delivery at all. We initially didn't want to do it because we were concerned about the safety of our staff and the people and how that was going to all work. So we haven't done any delivery. We um, just, uh, we did, we have a GoFundMe account, which is basically to um, help support our staff that's all on furlough or laid off. And that's been great. And we, um, are now, we just started this last week where we're feeding, we've just opened our Border Grill downtown kitchen with like six or seven employees. Um, hopefully that will grow. And we're doing 3000 meals a week to um, clinics, clinicians. So first responders in I think 25 different clinics around the city. Wow. And we're working on now with LASA, which is the housing for homeless and hopefully with the governor on for senior feeding. So hopefully that number will double over the next week or two. And um, so that's been very inspiring to see and our team get back in and do that and try to figure out how to do it safely. So, and then we've, I've, you know, we've been able, uh, right now been able to work with Jelena who got funded to do meals for restaurant workers. So our staff, we're picking up meals there for our staff oh, that cool. need food. And then um, another CSA group downtown where there's free produce for restaurant workers twice a week. So boxes of four for a family of four. Yes. So we're trying to sort of, you know, figure out how to support them, how to support the first responders, and then how do we get back, back to work and get people working safely and figure out can how to succeed during that, but yeah. you know, and so that that's that's what we're working on. And then and then I've been working a lot with the LGBT center trying to help get produce for our food pantry there, so that grocery we can continue to do grocery bags all week long to seniors that are quarantined in their homes. So I've been working at with a pro with our produce company, LA Specialties, which is now Vesta, to get free produce to stuff those bags. Did you say Vesta? Yeah, that uh, Vesta is a company that bought LA Specialty, who's been our produce company forever. Mm -hmm. So they have a, a nonprofit branch that we're working with that is doing deliveries or we're picking up for the Los Angeles LGBT Center, where we have volunteers, angels that are stuffing bags and delivering to these seniors. And, you know, and making calls to seniors to be able to make sure, you know, there's a club called the Hello Club where we're calling seniors to make sure they're okay. And if they need anything, the center can help get them help. Um, so that's been, that's been, you know, keeping me busy. I feel yeah. like a complete slacker. 
<laughs> yeah, hey. what have you been doing, Liz? <laughs> you, hey, you, you, learned how to, you learned how to do plumbing. I'm sorry. I'm impressed, Susan. I really am. And I think you're doing good work. But you I learned mean, how to do plumbing. Yeah, That's very amazing. important. That oh, I did give the dogs play. haircuts. Oh, that's, oh, that's good too. Dogs, How did that work? Did they look good? Well, I yeah, I've been I used to groom dogs when I was in my twenties. I didn't, I never worked as a groomer, but I apprenticed, so I learned how to do it. So now I I've always wow. and and our neighbor said something that showing Liz how she tried to groom her dog after Liz showed how our dogs look. I saw the neighbor's dog and that was, was like, does your, does your dog have mange? <laughs> dog okay? It was like some places to the, to the skin. <laughs> I was like, hey, that's just sad. That's just really sad. It's a nerve of some people. Yeah. <laughs> so Liz, well, what I, have you, you've been writing, you were saying, what, tell us what you're working on. Yeah, I'm working on a couple, well, two new screenplays. When I get a little disgusted with one, I move to the other. <laughs> when I hit a, a bump in one, I'm like, ah, I can't figure this out anymore. So then I go to the other. But I've been working on a couple new projects. Um, Pinup is still actually here and there uh, in some festivals. It's my mother. My mother's calling. You you need to talk to her. We understand. Your mother. How old is your mother? Ninety seven. Oh, and she's okay. Her. She's doing good. She's okay, but she's they've they've been in lockdown for a while now and so the only way i can um uh, i can talk to her on the phone obviously. i'm gonna leave and i'll go call her really quick to okay. tell her i'm doing this yeah. yeah okay but she'll forget and probably call anyway that's okay <laughs> right um, okay. <laughs> whatever so, needs to happen uh, i i go to uh, the place where she lives and her living room window looks down on the driveway mm. So I'll go drop something. I'm allowed to drop things, you know, and they'll take them up to her, but I can't, I can't get in there. So, so it's been a little stressful, I have yeah. to say, yeah. for many reasons, but that's really more stressful on me than me being home because right. God forbid anything happened to her yeah. while we're in lockdown, yeah. this is a no-go. So, um, you know, at her, May 25th, she'll be 97 wow. and she is the funniest person I know which is funnier great. than you I don't believe that I get it I get it from somewhere she <laughs> said to me she said um I said I said uh she, she says I'm not doing well and I said what's wrong and uh she says I'm falling apart it's finally catching up to me I said what and so she's she needs me to help her fill in her menus because everything is in their rooms now they won't let them out of their rooms it's really something. So all their meals they have to order. And she's like, what do I have? I don't remember. So I've got to tell her, you know, and she's got to read the entire menu at least five times because she forgets that she already read it to me. Oh, <laughs> hilarious. I have to do a short film on this because yeah, this little little. Screen. it's hilarious. But um, so uh, she says, I don't know what to do. And we get all done with that. And I said, mom, I think you're doing great. She goes, who am I talking to? <laughs> no she's joking she's kidding <laughs> no this is her humor so when i told her that they had to stay in the room she said geez it's like it's like i'm in prison i said i'm sorry mom and she goes well i can always jump out the window <laughs> i said yeah yeah mom but you can only do that once <laughs> so i go to the we go to the driveway we wave to her through the window we talk on the phone you know, that's all we can do there. But yeah. that's been the, the biggest stressful thing. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, but meanwhile, I'm working on my stuff and Pinup yeah. has been actually won a couple best short film awards in India. Oh, India. Cool. oh cool. It's very exciting. That's interesting. I know that's one very in, one exciting. One festival in Hyderabad, apparently they like it in India. Hyderabad <laughs> and the other was in um, Mumbai. I can't yeah, remember. in Mumbai. Oh. Yeah. So, so is one of the projects you were, oh, sorry. Making, yeah, you were in the process of making it into a feature. Are you still well, working yes, on that? Yes, I'm, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it came from the feature. So, you know, the short came from the feature script. So yeah, I've been talking to a few producers that love it. And so we're just seeing how we move it forward, you know, money, all that stuff, cast, all that. But, you know, we'll see. 
And what about, and doing research on the script that I think is going to be pretty exciting, but I won't tell what it is with the books you're reading. Oh, <laughs> the secret? It's not. <laughs> But it's just not that interesting. <laughs> no, I'm sure I not. haven't figured out how to make it interesting. It's interesting. I'm but... reading a book about the guy who's the who's been the editor of the Oxford English Dictionary for I don't know. Oh. Years or <laughs> I love words. That's interesting. When you hear like where word the etymology, the yeah. history, uh, where words come from, it's so intriguing to me. So of course, to me, this is a wonderful book. To Susan, it's like <laughs> I'm always I'm always so. I'm like blown away. Like all of a sudden Liz will like read something or something and she'll say, oh my God, wouldn't that make a great movie? And then like all of a sudden, like now there's a movie sort of forming. That was, you know, I mean, I think it's inter it's an interesting way her mind works. Mm -hmm. There, that's a nice way. <laughs> but you know, it used to be when we first got together like 25 years ago, we'd be like driving, you know, driving along and then, you know, Liz would like pick up her phone and then leave a message on her home phone when this when you had a home phone. Before we had, you know. And she'd memos. leave like a line yeah. like, um, I want to hold your hand or yeah, something. I wish, I wish I wrote that one. <laughs> <laughs> she'd leave a line like and that. then I wrote. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then like four weeks later, her and her writing partner, she'd come home yeah, with like she's a talking little about music, music, come yeah, home yeah. with like a, a whole song yeah. wow. and it'd be, yeah. and that's the same thing she does with the script. It'll be like, she's got this idea and then all of a sudden it'll be like two weeks later and there's a story. There's a whole story. It's like, where does that come from? When you're writing, cause you're a writer director, when you're writing, can you also kind of visualize, are you oh, seeing it? Often, I yeah. don't. I don't realize I'm doing that until I put the director's hat on, and I then I realize, oh, this has been visualized since I wrote it. In order to write it, I'm already visualizing it, which I didn't realize before. I hadn't. I wasn't connecting to that before, but but it's always been there. And I think that's, that's why oftentimes when people would read what I've written, they'd say you write like a director, and I really didn't know what that meant. But I'm, I think it's because I really have in mind what I want the audience to be looking at mm -hmm. when, they're, when they're reading the story on paper. I want them to be seeing the film in their heads. So I'm often, without realizing it, you know, controlling the, the visual of where, where they're seeing it from. So, yeah. Wow. That's yeah. cool. That's very cool. Um, <laughs> we want to remind people to uh, comment and to ask questions. You have two amazing women here who I'm sure would be happy to answer any questions you have. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep an eye on the feed. There are lots of people who have tuned in and are watching Aileen and Jerry and Sandy and Karen. So lots of lots of fans tuned in to see you guys today. Cool. Um, so, you know, we're so excited that, that you did this with us. Thank um, you. We're thrilled to be here. This is fun. <laughs> it's really fun. We've been doing, we have been doing a lot of cooking at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the videos that you've been making, cooking and making videos simultaneously. Can you talk about that? Yeah, they're nothing to do with me wanting to do them. It's like, <laughs> it's, you know, it's like, oh, my God, like, I'm just like She's okay. cooking again. Uh, <laughs> what am I going to do now? Because we could, just, we could yeah. tell people that Liz is, and hopefully you don't mind me using this term, but you're kind of a picky eater. If kind I, of. Picky, picky is <laughs> putting it mildly yeah. yeah so you're married to you're Jordan. married to one of the world's greatest chefs in history Wait, and you're a picky eater <laughs> it just sounds negative it is. i say <laughs> selective i'm yes and no, discerning. Not discerning i'd say healthy mm. oh well maybe <laughs> maybe no sugar no grains although i've snuck quinoa in here um that's a good grain no dairy really to no speak dairy. of no milk yeah. in your coffee it's not real milk. oh yeah it's, it's flax okay no dairy uh no you know no gluten. no pork no gluten no lamb no blah blah i'm, barely trying, I'm trying to outlive her <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, well, okay. i find that really interesting because my house has become that kind of a house for health reasons um over here so I spend a lot of time now trying to jerry rig recipes, especially baking, 
it's like, oh, okay, I found a gluten-free, dairy-free, blah, 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 free recipe. And then it's like, oh, it has sugar. (laughs) It has this. So is it easy for you, Susan, with all your experience to be like, all right, I'll just substitute this? Or do you still have to kind of seek out the information? You know, it's interesting because normally I'm not home, you know, seven nights a week. (laughs) So it's been interesting. You know, I I haven't really, um, I mean, I I have been cooking a ton, but, you know, I'm sort of stuck on, you know, I haven't been thinking like, okay, what are all the things that, you know, I could really do, but it's been pushing me more to sort of think about it. I mean, definitely one of the things I like so much is that we've like, we we're eating all of our leftovers. I love that. I can't yes. stand to have leftovers. Oh, wait, I have to tell you something I've discovered after all these years. What? Susan's almost favorite thing, which I really didn't know because she wasn't home that often, is to organize the fridge. Oh. It's like, I swear to God, every time I turn around, she's in the fridge. You can't even see her. She's like this in the fridge. Like, and I hear stuff like moving around and, and shit being thrown into the sink. And it's like, what are you doing? Well, I just can't stand this. I'm like, who knew? I had no idea this was a thing for her. <laughs> but you know, I think I think it's well because you know, also um because we're we've got so much produce that's sort of in there and working through it that, you know, you got to keep rotating right. what you're using. But, but I do feel like, you know, I've made a couple different curries and we've had a, you know, bunch of vegetable sautés and roasted vegetables and, you know, tacos. We've been, I've been making, you know, tortillas and tacos. And tacos and the only person on the planet that would stick their tongue out when Susan Feniger <laughs> says she made them tacos. <laughs> Tacos again. Tacos again. I, you know, <laughs> world famous tacos again. Yeah, and making, you know, you know, usually, usually when she's cooking, I tell her what she's doing wrong. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> and you know, I just realized because got a bunch of cilantro from the CSA. The mm. thing is, like, what's the CSA? Got, honey? You know, from a community garden. So, um, so we've got a bunch of cilantro. So I thought, oh, that gosh, could do. I could do that coriander vinaigrette. That would be really yummy. We got a ton of really delicious mustard greens. Liz won't eat, but whatever. They're too spicy. You know, a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of other bitter greens that Liz won't eat. But I, we got gorgeous beets, and I took mm. all the beet greens and blanched them, and then mar- in just a little bit of salted water, mm. drained them, marinated them in olive oil and vinegar, and they're so sweet and yummy. Who can That's do that? Delicious. What did you just say? What? Beet greens. <laughs> so I roasted through the beets in the oven. What, what, wait, threw them in the oven what? on what? In, in aluminum what? foil, skin on, threw them in the oven. Salt, pepper, oil, no, anything, nothing. 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 And then threw them in there and then took the beet greens, all the tops, and cut them off. Cut them off. Yeah. Okay, these are important things. Because the beets are already in the oven, so she had <laughs> to cut yeah. them off. Did you, what <laughs> order are we doing? And then a pot with? of water on the stove with a lot of salt. Bring it to a boil. Drop the beet greens in for just brought it back to a boil. Drained them, mm-hmm. and then let them drain well. And then add a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and I think lemon. And they're so yummy. Like I'd love that with crumbled feta cheese and tomatoes that are sliced thin with olive oil, salt, pepper, and avocado and beet greens. Wait, and then take so those beets. <laughs> People can replay it. It's okay. This will be, okay, this will be up for history. Good, so everybody's just like, play and pause. What? I'm so overwhelmed. All right. And I have a question though. Beets. So did you end up putting anything on the beets themselves? Well, the, well, yeah, you peel them. Yeah. You know, they come out of the oven after they're soft, and you can just peel, take a paper towel, and the peel comes right off. Do this. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. cut those however you want to cut them in half. Add a little bit of olive oil, salt, and, you know, fresh lemon or lime or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then take, take the beet greens, add the beets on top of that. Feta cheese around that Yum, with that a sounds, little bit of tomato. You never made that. Us. You never made. That. I know. I was making tacos last night. <laughs> that, I don't. And those beets were so yummy. That sounds good. And the beet greens were really yummy. And I think the mustard greens. I'm going to try sautéing them for her. They're so 
delicious. Yeah, they're yeah. spicy, but once you saute them they or get less steam them, they'll be them. less spicy. But okay, they're fabulous, right? Well, now. we'll need a report back on how those were. Yes, we will. <laughs> Ask me, because I'll tell you. That, the truth. Yeah, that's what I want to know. I want to know what you think. You yeah. know, we've been doing also just like really simple, like because we've gotten a bunch of mushrooms, like mm -hmm. just a very simple mushroom soup with sauteed mm -hmm. leeks. Add the mushrooms, really cook those down, add a little bit of water or veg stock or chicken stock, and that's it. And then, that's it? Yeah, that's it. You didn't put any <laughs> carrots or anything in there? No, and they're so yummy. It's just a great mushroom broth with mushrooms and then maybe cook a little bit of lentils on the side and have lentils and mushroom soup. Okay. Or a cheese okay. case. Yeah. And you should be making your own. I taught Liz how to make tortillas. <laughs> yes, she did. You, you, that you learned learn that. You know why? Because right. there's a little tortilla maker and it looks like a little machine. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, yeah. Press. A press. Yeah. Oh. So that, I like that part of cooking. Cause that's fun. gadgets yeah yeah, yeah. But that's fun and, but and do you like, make gluten-free so tortillas because you don't what? do gluten are they gluten-free do you do no, corn? But i i oh, decided i don't know corn. but i decided way back five years ago that corn would be the only thing that i would allow in in terms of grains okay mm -hmm. yeah and that's that's the end of that so. but she made but i made them she rolled the balls made that blah blah oh. cooked them, put them on the thing that's impressive. So turned, them over. Right? turned them over. Turned right? Turned them over. Turned them over with a little yeah. spatula. Boom. <laughs> and I'm cooking. Was, uh, that, was that Fanny or Punch? That was Fanny. <laughs> they have the greatest dogs. Yeah. I know. So cute. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Um, uh, asking Jerry says she loves bitter greens. <laughs> um, How about dandelion? Can you Aileen married to cook because she can't cook. She can make coffee. <laughs> um, not seeing any questions yet, people. Ah. Um, oh, wait, here we go. Um, we have a comment from Lisa who says she has diabetes. Can Susan uh, give a good recipe for someone that has diabetes? She's been eating a lot of vegetables, no fruit, a lot right. of protein. Well, there's so many, I mean, the vegetables are so great. Like, I mean, for an example, if does she like artichokes? If she likes artichokes, I love steaming an artichoke. Yeah. And then Liz makes the, sa the sauce that goes with it, which she is- She forces me. <laughs> which is very simple. Mayonnaise, lime or lemon, and cracked black pepper, Ooh. and a little bit of salt. And that's ah, wonderful. I that's a good that. dip. That's a really good dip and easy artichoke. That sounds really what else good. For diabetes? You know, making lentils. Lentils are fantastic, easy, and they're yeah. lentils and quinoa is full protein. So it's a perfect meal, okay. no sugar. And, you know. Um, and how do you prepare the lentils? Like, what's the best way to do the lentils? Well, take, let's say it's orange lentils. I buy them oh. already cooked. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> That's my best way. Yeah, call takeout. Do you have lentils? <laughs> Send them over. <laughs> so take onions, chop them up, brown them in a little bit of butter or olive oil. Get them really golden brown. If you like garlic, add garlic. Add that in there. Don't get them brown. Just cook it, sweat it, you know, slowly. Yeah. And then I like to add cumin powder. Cook Wait, it in the fat. Do you have to soak the lentils first? And you don't them? have to, but if they're orange lentils, you can rinse them a little bit so the water runs clear. Mm -hmm. And then- Wait, don't you have to cook lentils like in water or something? Yeah, but we yeah. haven't gotten there. Oh. oh. <laughs> Onions, garlic, ginger, cumin. Okay. And the lentils that you've rinsed a little bit in. <laughs> cook them in the onions mm -hmm. and fat, and then add water or stock and then cook it for about till they're soft. So like, you know, just cover the lentils, cook them for like 30, 45 minutes or so till they're soft. And if you've added too much water, just cook it down a little bit more. I love to finish it with brown butter and cumin mm -hmm. seeds. Oh, wow. We have a curry neem bush out back, but she no probably doesn't. A what bush? Curry neem leaf. 
What's that? It's an that? Indian, <laughs> looks like a bay leaf sort of, but it's an Indian spice that's just fantastic. Don't oh, you love it? I love it so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> a friend of ours asked what to do with mustard seeds right then. At the end, brown butter, mustard seeds, cumin seeds, really great. You could finish it, throw in a do little bit. Do you crush any of this? No. A seed, you yeah. just put it right in. Right in there in the butter, brown it, and then dump it into your lentils. Mm, that sounds good. That sounds yeah. Good. You always had to crush seeds. No, toast them. Toast? Well, you yeah. left that out. In the brown butter, you're toasting them. Oh, okay. Right, in the pan. So you put the seeds in with the brown butter in a pan and then you put it on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you do this. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you have to do that chef thing where you flip yeah. it? Yeah. I learned how to do that. You did? <laughs> you did? Tell That's about the easy. avocado toast. Do you like that? What? Avocado and goat cheese. I don't eat that. Oh. <laughs> she made avocado toast and she said, taste this. It's so good. And like, it's got cheese and toast, two things I don't eat. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, so I scraped off the avocado and ate that. And it was really good. So now she thinks I tasted the avocado toast. In her mind, that's the same thing. That's fine. <laughs> Oh my God. Make your own reality. That's the point. Totally. <laughs> Everybody's got their, what is it? You, you can have your own facts. You can't have your own facts, but you can have your own, that quote I've been saying lately. Um, Jerry wants to know where she can see the videos that you have been making of uh, Susan cooking, Liz. My, I think it's on my Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Liz Lockman. I think it's on my Instagram. We'll put it yeah. in the comments later. There is. What you're seeing right now is pretty much the videos, but there actually is food in the shot. Except <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not there. The food is there. You hear my voice is there. Yeah. Because as you can see. A little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see, Susan does things like, you know, says, just throw them in the oven and then just put them in a pot and just do that. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. What about cutting off the greens before you throw them in the oven? So I have to constantly teach her how to, Cook properly. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a mess. <laughs> and oh she did God. a robe in most of these, and it's really funny. It's so funny. It's awesome. It's awesome. My favorite line was the one where you were making tuna fish and you were adding all these things to it. And about three quarters of the way through the video, Liz says, You don't like tuna very much, do you? <laughs> Like you can't even taste the tuna because there's so much crap in it. It must not like the taste of it. Although, you know, it seems like I'll make two cans of tuna and then all of a sudden it disappears. <laughs> Maybe the dog <laughs> ate it. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a great way, it's a great way to stretch tuna. Like you've got one little can of tuna mm -hmm. and if you add in scallions and apples and relish and hard-boiled egg and then you add your mayonnaise or olive oil and lemon juice or whatever you want to mix it did you put vinegar in it too if i don't add lemon vinegar and then you know all of a sudden one little can becomes this much right mm -hmm. so it's, a way you know to it's like it. it's really what she does is she takes a big huge glop of relish <laughs> and puts a teeny bit of tuna in it <laughs> no. it's a great way to stretch tuna cell tuna. <laughs> Terrible way to stretch stretch relish though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love making curries right now. People could make curries really easily at home. Because that yeah. seems like a really hard thing to do for the, the average person. It's I mean, if you're a little bit, even if you're not, I mean, what's so interesting is if you follow a recipe different than looking on the internet about how to fix plumbing. If you follow a recipe and you don't worry about following it exactly, but you base the basic concept of it, it's so easy. It's interesting. I hadn't, you know, I hadn't looked really at a recipe for a while. So I was, I was going to be doing this demo of something I hadn't done for a long time. And I looked back at it. It's like, oh, that's so easy. If you just get the products. Yeah. You get, if you could, you know, if you're at the grocery store and you can get a couple of those. Like products. what? Like what? Well, like in making a curry. See how she needs me to plot her? <laughs> like what? So let's talk about curry, Susan. Like what would you get at the store? 
<laughs> See, that's why she's a director. Totally. <laughs> that's why you're so perfect. Her. <laughs> have you guys, have you seen any of those videos that Liz did that she filmed of uh, chef tips? Oh, I love those them. Are, yes, those are amazing. Yeah, I love those. They're Everybody has to check those out. I now know how to cut a, a melon. I didn't know how to cut a melon Me before. Me too. Now I, do. I, I, was, I was practicing being a director. And, I, and they always say, use what you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have her. Yeah. But I wanted, so we put everything in black and I, and I just used from here to here of Susan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's and, so cool. and, and it's all music because I'm so sick of hearing her say, hi, I'm Susan Panniger. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, if I have to hear that one more time, <laughs> I just said, forget it. I don't want to hear her talk at all. So we did all to music and it's very fun. They're so great. Yeah. They're, well, and yeah. I mean, I think they're I tough. love the way they're shot. Yeah. I love the way they look, yeah. and but I like that it just gives someone a bit of information, you know, that seems so second nature to us, but might not be to someone else. Yeah, I mean, I always think like I've learned a lot from watching cooking shows, but the things that I've learned in those are, are so fundamental and basic that they, they're the things that like your, your conversation today, like you wouldn't tell us how to cut up a melon because you that's second you nature. know how to do that yeah. right but that's a big deal i never knew how to cut a melon me either, so me either. i'm always yeah. like oh. stay, stay. <laughs> yeah right you know, as you yeah know, i found another use for melon this morning oh yeah i would tell the people which <laughs> was to put the tripod because my tripod's only this big with the iphone in it put it right on the big watermelon <laughs> it worked like a charm it's the a perfect thing we haven't peeled it yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Beautifully. So in the case perfect marriage of cooking one. and filmmaking. Yes. Right. There there you go. Go. Food and film. That's yeah. how they go together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Beth Harrington wants to know what keeps them motivated now work-wise. <laughs> what keeps you motivated? I Me. don't, yeah, I don't want to see Susan. So I have to stay in the other part of the house. So that's a big motivator. <laughs> um, you know what? I love storytelling and there are stories everywhere. You know, uh, sometimes I just look at my neighbors and I'm like, oh my God, like the woman with the haircut or I talk to my mother and there's just, there's so many wonderful, um, uh, delicious, um, deep, People are, are full of love and passion down underneath. And I love trying to find that in, in the stories, you know? So to me, everywhere I look, I see stories of, of, of history, background, culture, and, and people's um, upbringings and the way they view the world. And um, I love comparing, contrasting, putting those people in a room and having them talk, you know, on paper when I'm writing. It, I, I see stories everywhere. So I never lack for motivation in terms of, um, I, love, I love telling stories and I love writing stories and soon hopefully I'll be doing feature film storytelling. But, but that does, that's my motivation. It's just my, my love for it. You know, and I don't have to have a whip cracked because <laughs> it's, it's all there. You know, sometimes I'll just be sitting somewhere and I'll laugh about something just because I just made a story up in my head and it made me laugh. And Susan's like, what are you laughing about? I'm like, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> also, I think, you know, I mean, from the outside looking in, I think, you know, Liz reads constantly, like even, even to a point where like, we're like, I come home from work, not right now, but. I am more at home, but I'd come home and be like, we're supposed to be somewhere in like 20 minutes. And Liz is like, at, you know, at the kitchen reading some, reading in a magazine. She's like into like walks by something and it's sort of like, oh, and then all of a sudden she's immersed in me. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, that kind of um, being so inquisitive, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. About things, I think, because your mind is sort of constantly yeah. in that yeah. mode. So, yeah. And I, you what know- What about you? What keeps you motivated? Well, I'm, you know, right now, you know, there's so much going on. It's just understanding what's going on with our company and trying to 
make sure we stay uh, tight enough to be able to reopen mm -hmm. and trying to do what we can to support you know, part of our team and then trying to figure out how to reopen when this is all sort of moved to another place. And then in addition to that is, you know, there's a lot of the work that, you know, I've mentioned that I think is very important, which is how do we help deal with the people that are out there on the front line? That to me is, you know, I, I look at how nervous I am about being out there. And I think about these people that are so brave, they're out there every day putting themselves mm -hmm. at risk. So trying to sort of support that has been really, motivating and you know i think i'm very involved as you know i'm on the board of the los angeles lgbt center and our culinary kitchen that we just launched this summer is providing meals for seniors and for youth still you know all through this whole time the center has stayed open with services obviously many people working from home but still there for the community. And so that's been also part of my motivation through this is how can we help support that? How do we get other people to help support the center and what's going on? And so there's too much on, honestly, I feel like I have too much on my plate right yeah. now. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I don't know that, you know, for me, I, I don't feel like being motivated to work has ever been an issue. You it's know? usually she has to be motivated to take a break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like it. Yeah. 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 And yeah. what have you been? Have you been? You know, you talked about what you do on the weekends is cleaning the bathroom. But what have you been doing for fun? Like, how do you entertain yourselves during what? This lockdown? You must have fun, Liz. <laughs> Please. We're taking. I mean, we. Of course, the dogs. Like everybody's dog is sick of walks. <laughs> but you know, I mean, we've been, we probably though haven't been doing enough of it. We go, we go toward the dogs at the leash and they run away now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, taking the dogs for walk, playing ball with the dogs. Um, we've, you know, reading. Well, you know what we have been doing? We've been playing taboo, um, oh. FaceTiming with friends. Oh, that's fun. Taboo. Yeah, that's And there's fun. a, there's a little app, you can get taboo online. And we do it a little differently than the game is supposed to be played with teams. We do one person uh, um, giving the clues and everybody trying to guess the word. Um, oh, if cool. you know how that game works, you, there's five, five words you cannot say and, mm -hmm. to get them to say the one word. And so rather than teaming, we do one person giving clues and um, and it's actually, that's been actually pretty fun. And we drink a lot. <laughs> that's been a blast. It's almost 3.30. Yeah, right? we, <laughs> I want to show you what we got two of. Okay. Oh. This is our third <laughs> one. Okay. This is exciting. Look how big this is. Wow. This is <laughs> as big as me. It has been almost seven weeks. <laughs> this is huge. This is our third one. And I think we had some before that. <laughs> And what do but you make been, with it? You know, we've what? Been, what do you make with it? What's your specialty? Okay. We make, well, let me hold it for a while. <laughs> I, I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> vodka, 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 soda, soda mm -hmm. fresh grapefruit juice, mm -hmm. little splash of fresh grapefruit. Susan sparkling puts a lot. water. Yeah, sparkling water. That's mm. the soda. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Susan, chef. <laughs> Susan puts a, a lime squeeze in hers. I don't. I From the tree, which the grape, is great. The grapefruit yeah. is enough citrus for me. We've also very been... fresh. Mm. And for those of you who are diet conscious, there's not oh. very many points. You only got the juice. That's it. it and vodka's and, got like one it, for Weight Watchers people. And we've been doing, <laughs> and we've point. been doing um, also Campari and sparkling wine or champagne or you know whatever yeah. a little bitters oh. or dry yeah. vermouth or dry vermouth put a slice of orange it's like a negroni but it's champagne instead of wow. gin so it's like a champagne negroni and this was so <laughs> that's three in the afternoon that this was like. so <laughs> the other day we didn't have any sparkling or champagne so she took white wine oh, and okay. added into that a little bit of sparkling water, the Campari, and then great. bitters. That and good. orange slice in that. 
Yeah, it's a very refreshing thing. So that to me, if if you're in the mood for a daytime drink, not that I would drink it ever during the day, <laughs> but if I did, that is a refreshing drink where the vodka has a little bit more uh, heaviness to it. So that's yeah. in the evenings. And then I did a kumquat <laughs> ginger margarita Ooh. yesterday. Not for Liz though, but no, because she made it. Good. Would you make it tequila? Yeah. Yeah, that is a margarita. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink tequila. So. It could be mezcal, but we don't have any mezcal here. Yeah. Although but so, it's yeah. like my new favorite spirit is mezcal. Yeah. Or, well, not that new, but <laughs> <laughs> newer. Ish. Newish. Yeah. Newish. But we've also, um, you know, we FaceTimed with a lot of people. That, I mean, I think if there's a silver lining in any of this, for me, it's been connecting with a lot of people and through FaceTime. I mean, now I sort of think, why, why wouldn't you FaceTime all the time? Because it's such a great way to... Because sometimes you have to put your makeup on and get dressed. That's why. Right. But, <laughs> but only from the waist up. You need a Jane Jackson, a Jane Jackson <laughs> mask. Forget. Unless you forget and stand up by mistake. <laughs> but I love, I love that. I think that, you know, it's all, it's a very different way or Zoom meetings. It's such a great way. Yeah. You know, we did a board meeting the other night that was just going to be a phone board meeting with like 20 of us. And we did the Zoom, a Zoom meeting instead, which of course we've done a million of, but, but it's so great to see people and be able yeah. to make that connection. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we've happy hour with friends on, right. you know, zooming and having drinks and talking. Yeah. And matter of fact, I almost like it sometimes better than being with them because then you can hang up. Right. <laughs> You're right. Oh, my connection is bad. Yeah, <laughs> my 40 minutes is up. <laughs> you do it for like an hour and a half. You're done. Done. You don't have to spend yeah. three hours across the table yeah. thinking, when can I go home? And you don't yeah. drink as much as you want because you don't have to drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hence that's the bottle, third bottle of vodka. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bring my, uh, bring my, listen, Devmo, here's a, how this happened. Ordinarily, I would never buy anything this big. I was ordering Devmo <laughs> on, you know, in the, the normal size bottle. And they said, you know, if you get one of these big ones, 1.75 liters, you can have a second one for five cents. Five cents. I was like, what? Happy quarantine. <laughs> well, yeah. so I did it, but oh, wow. you wouldn't. But yeah. you know, they had a special going, but it's like, oh my God. Unbelievable. So, yeah, that's that's the new normal yeah. is that size bottle. Wow. <laughs> Are you guys doing online groceries? No. No. Okay. No. I Some mean, things you have to feel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been going to the grocery store and getting, you know, vegetables that are like, you know, being, I mean, for example, the other day, Mary Sue got her, her package and ordered a delivery and got like three extra boxes. So she put it outside and I went and got one. Oh, that's cool. It's from a different forager. That's really was delicious. That's what those cherries were. They're yeah. so yummy. They look but, good. You but showed we've been them going. the cherries, not on. Oh, you well, showed, I, during our test when you our, showed our we long saw the cherries. Yeah. Trust yeah. us, everybody. Yeah. The, the cherries look looked amazing, and her <laughs> beat the beats. Yeah, I could hear them when she did I it. Hear yeah. the crunch. <laughs> hear the crunch. No, those um, were the radishes. Oh, oh the radishes. Radishes. That's what it was. Get, yeah. your, root, get your root vegetables right. <laughs> I mess up <laughs> my root vegetables a lot. I got to admit. We have a lot of root vegetables. Yeah, we've been having a lot. Rutabaga, yeah. celery roots, so parsnips. The, and you know how you know they're root vegetables? They have the word root in them. <laughs> Rutabaga. Parsnips. <laughs> Rutabaga. <laughs> and they last longer, right? I mean. I love rutabaga. It's like my favorite root vegetable. Rutabaga. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever tasted rutabaga. I don't think I've oh ever. Oh my either. God, it's so fabulous. What, uh, like, mean, can you compare it to I anything else? Whole, like parsnip, right? Kind of sweet. Uh, well, it's between, well, parsnip is very particular. It's between parsnip, mushroom, and mm. what else? And Jerusalem artichoke. Oh, my other favorite vegetable, but then you know, pretty much never, Jerusalem. Never heard of it. <laughs> Jerusalem artichoke? Never heard of it. <laughs> the best. It's another root vegetable, right? Yeah. Fabulous. You don't see it too much. You, I got it. And both those, you peel them. <laughs> Roast them, olive oil, salt, and pepper. 
Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you would roast butternut squash or any right. squash or yeah. any winter squash. Yeah. I got a Japanese, like Japanese yam, I think. Is that what it is? A Japanese yam, the purple one? I got one of those <laughs> yeah. by accident the other day and it was delicious. <laughs> What'd you do? What should you do? I just you um, do? roasted it. A little olive oil, salt and pepper. Uh, was it good? Gar garlic powder. It was, was good. It good. I liked it. Garlic powder. Yeah. yeah. You said powder. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know, never say that word around season pepper. <laughs> you know you how should have a little thing drop down like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I like, I love those uh, <laughs> Japanese, <laughs> powder. <laughs> that Japanese yam is fabulous with a dollop of sour cream and pink peppercorns. Yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> yeah. Around the house. Do you crush the pink peppercorns? Susie, you don't even need to. You don't mm -hmm. need to. No. Do, you ro do you heat them up in a pan, the pink peppercorns? No. You just, just put them on. Just like roast your yam, cut it in half, put some butter, dollop of sour cream, pink peppercorns. Like right. sprinkles, you know, like oh. sprinkles on a, a cupcake. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah that sounds like a better way to do it. <laughs> I like that even with a baked potato. I like sour, I pink peppercorns with sour cream and potatoes, like mm. yum. That sounds good. I'm getting a little hungry. I, I know. I know. We, we, I have one more cooking question though while we have you, which is, I know a lot of us have bought canned because in the beginning when it was like, we're never going to get food again. Right. <laughs> so we bought a lot of canned vegetables, um, yeah. which I'm sure makes you cringe, but any way to like make them taste better? <laughs> canned vegetables? Yeah. Like if you have canned beans or canned corn, like like canned green beans. Can you, you dress mean? them up? Can you dress them up in any way that they'll taste better? Yeah, I mean, like beans. You're talking about beans, like black beans or no, like, like, like green, green beans. beans. Yeah, or black bean. I mean, any kind of any anything canned that obviously just yeah. I mean, things like beans, like you know, dr like black beans. That's easy. You know, there. You know, you'd caramelize onions and garlic and add the beans and mash them up a little bit and butter or oil and. That'd be great. You could finish them with like tomato and cilantro or blah, blah, like that. Yeah. Or, but things like canned green beans, I would have said buy frozen if you're going to buy it, but okay. <laughs> but they were out. They were, I have to say, like a lot of us were had trouble in the getting beginning. frozen in the beginning. Yeah. So, okay. So if I had canned green beans, I'd probably drain the water off. I would probably do something like saute onions, caramelize them. Yeah. And then maybe add garlic and tomato and then take the canned green beans. So it almost become it's already stewed when they're canned like that. Right. So now it becomes a stewed thing. Put that, you know, you could add feta cheese, put that over pasta. That'd be yummy. Well, you don't eat gluten, but don't put we, it. We do a gluten free pasta. We've we've come to accept yeah. that <laughs> that's our reality. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I if it's canned, I'd probably do something, move it into the stewed direction because it's already stewed. So then just oh. highlight that. That makes sense. Brilliant. I, Brilliant. I got canned toilet paper because we couldn't find that. Too. <laughs> I couldn't find fresh toilet paper. I got frozen. Funny. Frozen yeah. toilet well, paper. <laughs> we got Kleenex. Liz bought like 15 cases of Kleenex. Well, I was, my mother needed Kleenex, boxes of Kleenex, like the square. And she's very particular. Only the square boxes. And you know, they were sold out everywhere on Amazon, everywhere. So I had to buy like 40 I had to get a thing of 40 boxes. <laughs> now we have like 20 boxes of Kleenex in here, but we, we don't have any, we've got like four rolls of toilet paper left. So I, go, I guess we'll go to Kleenex after yeah. that. Yeah. We, also, we also get the LA Times in case. You there you go. Back up. Yep. Back up. <laughs> oh man. All yeah. right. Well, well, man, I hate to say it, but it's, Five past one. We've already been on for an hour. We could do this all day. I know. <laughs> so much fun. That was fun. It was really but, fun. Um, we're going to let you guys get back to your life. And uh, thank you so much thank for being you. here. As a reminder to any of our listeners, three things we want to remind you of. Our tea party next week with Sashi Chandran. It's going to be a blast if you want to order your tea and in May, advance and so you can taste it with us. And May is going to teach us how to make her scones. They're yummy. Um, uh, Mother's Day gift pack. This is the last day you can buy it without missing Mother's Day delivery and sign up for the giveaway for the Pay It Forward box. Um, and we'll post all those links below. 
and we're also going to post we're going to post links for Susan's GoFundMe yep. and information about the LGBTQ Center in LA. We're going to post uh, Liz's Instagram so you can see the amazing video she's been doing there. Yep. If you guys have anything else you want us to share, just shoot us an email. We'll add that to the comments so people know how to find them and uh, can connect with you guys and support everything you're doing because you are two of the best human beings on the planet. <laughs> No, we you love both. you guys so much. Thank you so much for <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Really you guys fun. This is fun. Really yeah, fun. We can't thank fun. you enough. Everybody Bye. stay home, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay passionate. Love Back you. At you. You too. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.